do backbones and Epsom salts damage walking bathtubs? Today we're going to be talking about the, the kind of bathing additives you can add to the water in your in your walking bathtub. So the topic is going to be all about that. Um, if you've got any questions, we'll have a Q&A at the end of the webinar. Um, if you've got questions on other topics or, or other items, um, I'll leave my email address at the end of the session that you can certainly uh, send off uh, questions to that email address. But we're going to try and stay on topic today. Um, so yeah, every, everything to do with um, what you can add to the water here uh, in your walk-in bathtub. Uh, my name is Rory, I am general manager and one of the owners here at Safety Bath Walk-in Tubs and I have been since 2011. And Safety Bath, we are a manufacturer and distributor of walk-in bathtubs. We custom water jet and air jet our bathtubs to, to, for every order. Um, so we are fully aware of all the jet and options available to the bathtubs that you can put on them, being uh, Whirlpool systems, pure bubble systems, and all air jets from several different suppliers. So we do that all here in-house in Lethbridge. Um, so to really get going here, um, what can you actually add to the bathtub water that's safe for your walk-in bathtub? We regularly get asked, uh, can I add Epsom salts to the bathtub? And we really recommend that you do add something to the water because it just adds to the bathing experience. Um, so we have, you know, as we age, we have a lot of issues. Uh, as we get older, we got sore backs, we have arthritis, um, we got sore muscles, and, and, and taking a good hot bath can alleviate those issues and adding some sort of additive to the water, that aromatic experience will just add to the whole bathing experience. And uh, we really, really recommend that you do that. There's just a couple of things that you should be aware of. Um, in particular, if you have a Whirlpool tub, that you just don't want to clog up your Whirlpool systems or, or um, create any unnecessary uh, cleaning or maintenance that you need to do to, do to the bathtub by, by adding things that you shouldn't really be using in there in the first place. Um, to get going on it, bubble baths. Um, so bubble baths are great. Uh, in particular, as long as they're designed for, for Whirlpool um, bathtubs, and that's not to overly complicate bubble bath. If it says it's bubble bath, usually you're gonna be okay to use it in your walk-in bathtub. Um, you just wanna be um, aware that you don't use any excessive amounts. So use the right amount for your bathtub. We all know what that is. Um, don't go plugging a whole bottle into your into your tub. Again, you're just trying to uh, avoid any excessive uh, buildup, uh, overly soapy water that's gonna remain and stay in the bathtub or, or or sit in your whirlpool system after you've taken a bathtub. You're just trying to avoid that. So use the right amount um, and you really want to try and rinse the bathtub off every time that you take um, a bathtub, uh, a bath with any kind of soapy product in there. And I'm gonna repeat that several times over this webinar. Uh, to use bubble bath in the water, just make sure you rinse the bathtub off. Um, if you're using it regularly, bubble bath in the water, we'd also recommend that you use a Whirlpool kind of rinse as well. You can buy Whirlpool cleaners from the, the box stores to, to run through your Whirlpool systems. So bubble baths are, are great to use. Um, and then we can actually use bath oils as well. Now there, there's a couple different types of bath oils. Um, we've got carrier and essential oils. Uh, and at all costs, we really want to try avoiding those, those oils. The reason being is carry oils can actually leave a film. Um, so again, you're trying to avoid any buildup in water lines as well as your, your whirlpool pump. So you, you don't want anything that leaves a residue. A film would be a residue. So just stay away from carrier oils. Uh, you don't want any clogging in your pipe or, or your plumb in there uh, behind the bathtub. Uh, examples of uh, a carrier oil would be almond oil, jojoba oil and lanolin, lanolin oil uh, and there'll be others out there as well so just really ask the question if you're looking if you're wondering what kind of oil to use um, ask the question if it's a carrier oil or essential oil and stay away from from the carrier oils uh, so that moves us into the oils that you can use um, essential oils are brilliant um, essential oils are, are natural um, they're made from compressing um, natural products and to get the benefits and the, the, the smells from those products. So uh, as an example, they compress flowers, roots of berries to remove all the scents and the healing properties from them. And the reason why an essential oil works in your bathtub is they evaporate. So 
if it evaporates from the water lines or your or your pump system it's good it's not going to leave any residue but we still recommend like just rinsing your bathtub off after using them just to be on the safe side but they do evaporate so it's going to avoid any kind of excessive buildup um, examples of uh, an essential oils are rose essential oil bergamot essential oil cedarwood oils as well as turmeric essential oils so these items will be good, good to use and safe in your bathtub bath bombs so we've all seen bath bombs you've either walked past the store in the mall you can smell them while away they come prefabricated shapes um, really fun um, you see them at Christmas time a lot yeah I stick them in my kids stockings um, and absolutely fine to use in your soaker bathtub you don't want to use this if you've ordered your bathtub and you have a whirlpool system in it or any kind of pump system in it the reason being is, is what makes bath bombs fun is they fizz and they have elements inside them um, glitters or, or oats things like this which are all natural but what they do is they actually they will remain in your water line and can actually clog or or or, or create films in your in your water lines or in your pump systems behind the bathtub so really kind of stay away from any kind of bath bomb if you have a jetted bathtub jetted water jet or, or air jet uh, style bathtub um, use them in a soaker tub by all means but really really make sure that you rinse your bathtub off after every time you use uh, a bath bomb because if there's color or anything in there you just don't want any kind of staining or, or that hanging around in your soaker tub so jetted bathtub stay away from bath bombs you're okay to use them uh, in a soaker bathtub epsom salts epsom salts are the best to use and we absolutely really recommend that you use them and particularly natural epsom salts um, there's natural benefits to epsom salts and you can read about that you can look it up um, they, they can really add to the soothing effect of your bathtub um, and there's healing properties to epsom salts as well natural epsom salts are great because what happens is is when you add them to the water they actually dissolve in the water so they're going to disappear on you just like evaporation so they're going to dissolve into the water so when you drain the bathtub they're going to flush away and they'll they'll leave your 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 floor uh, your pump systems so you're going to avoid any kind of build up in there whatsoever so absolutely use natural epsom salts we highly recommend it it's going to add to your bathing experience and you'll get the benefits from it um, but if you are going to use um we do, still do recommend that you rinse your bathtub out and use like a whirlpool cleaner just to make sure that you do rid your 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 whirlpool system of any kind of build up in there whatsoever so to summarize and there may be other things that you can add to your bathtub but really that's kind of the general gist of what people are using in their walking bathtubs you want to avoid anything that's going to cause any kind of clogging or any build up or leave any film so don't use bath bombs in your whirlpool tubs uh, don't use any of the carry oil kind of uh, uh, essential the carry oils for for oils in your that you'd add to the water um, don't use like don't use something instead of bubble bath so don't use like um, shampoo or shower gels because these are different kind of soap and not formulated to be ran through uh, a whirlpool system so make sure you're using uh, bathtub um, like bubble bath and you'll be just fine um, just make sure anything that you do add to it is good to use with a whirlpool bath cleaner again we don't want to overly complicate anything but just make sure you're not using anything that leaves a film or a residue and you, you'll be just fine there um, and really really avoid those carrier oils again because they leave that film in the, in the bathtub and if you use anything regardless of what you use even if you have a nosinate or sanitizing system on your bathtub you're still going to want to run uh, at least uh, monthly more if you're regularly using these items you're still going to want to use like a whirlpool tub cleaner that you can pick up from from the box stores just to run it through your whirlpool systems to make sure you remove any kind of standing buildup that may may occur there so that's it for for the for the webinar here that's really quick uh, an easy one here uh, thank you for tuning in um, if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to shoot them off at the bottom of the screen here we'll, we'll type back to you uh, my my personal email is rory at safetybathtubs.com so if you have any other questions or if you have suggestions for a future webinar that you'd like to answer uh, send them your emails my way i will answer them um, it's canada day this friday so um, 
if there's no questions here, we'll, we'll thank you and have a happy Canada Day. And uh, thank you for your time. Have a good day.